Hi guys, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Stage, and I hope that you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. Uh, today's post is kind of a catch-up post, uh, kind of like what's been going on lately, as well as a fabric haul, and I'm also going to share with you some sewing pattern magazines that I have been getting my great little hands on. Uh, okay, so we got back from Normandy about four days ago and I've just spent the last four days kind of just you know getting back into normal phase I guess uh, when you've got five kids and you go on a camping holiday even though technically speaking I'm supposed to be on holiday I'm the one that's in charge of making sure that everything runs smoothly and I have to deal with all of the hiccups that come with traveling with children things like you know people getting car sickness or you know accidents that happen with wetting the bedding and things like that and so I'm constantly, I'm always constantly trying to be two steps ahead, trying to make sure that people don't get hungry, making sure that we've got some nutritious meals. So by the time I get back from a holiday, I kind of feel like I also need a holiday to get over that because I'm in hyper, hyper mothering mode when we're away from the home and also trying to make sure that everybody's kept safe. I'm like a little hen with her chicks. I'm kind of trying to constantly make sure that everybody's corralled and, and together. Uh, so I, you know, and then when you get back, there's also uh, the decamping process where you have to put everything back the way that it was and do all of the laundry. So I've just been a bit, uh, you know, and then of course there was this thing that happened where uh, we crossed over into France, everything was fine. And then uh, two days later, uh, the UK government uh, basically put in a, a requirement that when you're coming in from France, you then have to self-isolate for uh, 14 days. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know what the politics is behind that. All I know is that when we went to get ready our ticket for crossing, uh, using the Eurotunnel, we're told that, you know, you have to self-isolate for 14 days. So we're self-isolating, which means, um, it just basically means that we, we're not allowed to go out just for the sake of going out we can go out once a day to go get food and you're allowed out to go and get some exercise um and that's it but my husband works from home anyway so we were kind of self-isolating before it means that i can't go physical fabric shopping obviously uh so that's what's happening um and it's just as well, we're quite lucky that the kids don't start school until the 7th of September. And so that would be past the point uh, at which we have to self-isolate. So that's what's happening with me. We're self-isolating. It doesn't really make that much of a difference in terms of the time um, that I have. It, we're just basically doing the same thing that we were doing before we left for the holiday. We had a fabulous time in Normandy, even though it was raining most of the time. We still had a great time. It was just getting away from the house and just doing something adventurous together, uh, like camping and all of the cooking and all of the camping games that we played. It was fantastic. And we're definitely a lot better off uh, for it. Okay, so whilst I was out there, obviously, I looked for a fabric shop um, near Cherbourg. So one of the, the the only city that we went to visit was uh, Cherbourg to go to the uh Cite de la Mer Museum where they've got like a nuclear submarine and that was such an amazing uh, tour because you get to walk through a decommissioned nuclear submarine and the kids absolutely loved it. The museum also had an aquarium section which was so beautiful and I got like some really wonderful pictures of fish and of jellyfish over there. It was really fantastic. The Titanic exhibit, I didn't like it that much. The link is very tenuous uh, between Sherbrooke and the Titanic. The Titanic just stopped stopped there overnight to pick people up and so it kind of felt like they tried to stretch something out it was quite boring and the kids didn't enjoy it but on the way back from Sherbrooke along the way I was looking for a fabric shop and I found a fabric shop which is just kind of like along the motorway and I was like oh, okay do you guys mind if I stopped and go in and so I stopped and I went in and I had a look around and they had some lovely fabric so I ended up picking something from the remnant uh, box so they had a remnant Thingy. This is the fabric that I got, but it was fun kind of like walking around and seeing what um, what was in vogue in the French uh, shop. So 
I quite like this because my my sister is turning me towards considering these vintage style colors, I would say. Uh, ever since I did that wrap dress for her, I'm more open to this one. So this is the viscose. Oh, this feels nice. Oh, it's a really lovely feeling fabric. The quality is very similar to an art gallery fabric rayon chalice, if you've ever sewn with that. But if you see there, it's very, yeah, it's like blush pink. It's like a blush pink and then a base. So it's got a 70s vibe to it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to make with this. I think it would make a, oh, can I carry this? I don't know if I can carry this off close to my skin, but here we go. And then we have this, it's like a, it's, it's a cotton uh, fabric. So this is actually tied with an elastic band as I had hoped it's, it's, it's yarn. So mm. <laughs> here we go. Uh, it's a cotton and it's a really lovely embroidered cotton. And if you see the selvage edge has got a scallop. See if I can get this to focus in. There we go. So the selvage edge has got like a scallop and you've got that on the other side. <laughs> it's just so adorable. Now, if they'd had this on the roll, I would have bought it hands up, but they didn't have it. It's like, you know, this was the last of it. Uh, the plan with this one is to make a lovely little simple um, strappy top, Ogden Kami. There's enough here to make an Ogden Kami. And I think I'm gonna absolutely love this. Um, but yeah, so those are the two things that I got from the fabric shop. Apart from just like really enjoying <laughs> just being around fabric uh, whilst I was camping. And so it was kind of like, it was almost like I was going into a church or something like that. <laughs> it's like the church of fabric because I'm powered by fabric. Um, anyway, so that was that. And then I've also got um, some viscosy type fabric. It's a John Calder. And again, like I said, because my sister has been kind of ha exerting a little bit of her influence on me, I saw this and I thought, oh, this is quite lovely. It's got some blush pink and some peach and these squidgy little dots. And it looks lovely, I think. I have two meters uh, for this and I'm going to make a a uh, fall wrap dress from the Berda 9 2020 um, issue. I think that this is going to be lovely. It's got a V neck, so this will go down like that. And I, I don't know, I, I kind of, perhaps I'm flattering myself, but I kind of think that this will suit me really well. And especially with, I like nude color lipsticks now. I think that that's going to work beautifully okay and then we've got another John Calder this one is an abstract print because I'm trying to dip my toes away from just bright floral <laughs> prints and this is what we have here so it's got a little bit of a slubby texture on it quite interesting texture uh, too so it kind of makes this can you hear that so not exactly smooth but it's got a beautiful sound and it's got a really wonderful handle in that it has these uh, beautiful folds. And I think I haven't yet made up my mind. I'm stuck between three patterns, all of them from Berda um, as well, but I quite like this. It's purple and black brush strokes. Yeah, it's got like these big squiggly brush strokes. I think this could be interesting. This one's going to be either mm or mm, but I'm experimenting, which is pretty cool. Okay. And then, oh, sadly, I have to start thinking about autumn sewing because we're moving towards autumn now and I'm trying to create a transitional wardrobe for myself. I've got some quilted uh, fabric here, some quilted jersey, and it's from Meet the Maker. And I got this. Oh, these are all Minerva fabrics, by the way. And I got this. I like this because it's got a chevron print, a chevron texture, a chevron texture to it. And it's a burgundy. And the plan is to make a sweater from Berda, I think it's 3 2020 or 2, no, Berda 2 2020. And it's like a funnel neck uh, sweater with a grown on neck. But I want to make it into a dress. So I'm going to lengthen it to make it into. Uh, a dress and this should be comfortable I'll probably add some pockets because pockets 
are everything. I'm not in a hurry to sew this one though. I'll probably sew this one a little bit later, but these two, I'm going to be sewing them sooner rather than later. Okay, and then the other thing that I also got whilst I was in France, because uh, in France, in, over in Europe, they've got like a magazine stand that is full of these wonderful sewing magazines. And so I couldn't resist. I picked up two magazines. Uh, the first one was the Couture Actual Extra, which is Patrones, basically. So uh, Patrones is a Spanish name uh, for the magazine but in france they call it couture actuel and so i got this one. it's got some lovely patterns let me tell you because the nice thing about them as well is that you can sort of browse them on the new stand that was really good very excited about this plus you know they put it in yellow and pink and it's just like mm -hmm. just throw yellow and pink at me and you got me you got me okay and then the other one i'm a little bit embarrassed about but <sighs> so when i left for normandy I hadn't yet received my burda from Germany, so I picked up a French burda. <laughs> it's a compulsion. When I see a burda style magazine I don't have and I can buy it, I'm gonna buy it. So I got the Burda French magazine. And so it was quite nice because during the holiday when I was by the pool or when I was just chilling, I was just flipping through this and making up my mind like, oh, what am I going to make up? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then reading the instructions. And because I was away from my sewing uh, cave, it was very interesting to see what my choices were like away from the pressure of my unfinished projects that are sitting and waiting for me. So I could really just immerse myself into thinking about what I really like and what I would really want to sew out of it. So it was nice. So consequently, I've got two issues. I've got the German issue and the French issue because when I got back home, there was my German issue waiting for me. But yeah, so I got these uh, two. So th those were the other things that I got that were so related in France. And I was also looking on eBay and I found some Berta magazines that I like. Um, I'm trying to fill out my 2013 collection. So I'm a Berta completist. What that means is I want to have the full 12 issues for each year i i just want to do that so ever since i started subscribing uh three years ago so i've got the last three years i've got those completely because i've been subscribing so the years before that i'm trying to plug in by buying on ebay as and when i come across them and so i was happy to find this one the 2013 um, and this was May 2013, and it has got some bangers in it, absolute fantastic patterns, loads of maxi dresses. So, yeah, I was very happy um, to find this. I bought it on uh, eBay, put in an offer for it, the seller accepted. And so I was like, thank you. And so when I got back home, there it was with my uh, German Berger as well. And I also picked up uh, this vintage one. Because uh, I just, I really liked the high waist, this high waist here, skirt. And I like like the extra wind. <laughs> so it's quite frivolous, but I have to admit that this one, it was a late at night purchase. I was just in the tent and it was raining and it hadn't stopped raining all day. And it was also humid, so it was uncomfortably humid and I couldn't sleep and my allergies were acting up and all that. So I ended up being on the phone and I was like, <laughs> get it. But when I got back uh, from Germany, there it was as well. Uh, sorry, when I got back from Normandy, there it was. And I also got this old baby here. This is possibly the oldest one that I have. So this is 5 1958 and it's a sewing magazine. It's newer, newer mode, so kind of like Berta, but not quite Berta, as in it was a sewing magazine. So it's got like some uh, 50s style uh, dresses and tops. And I have to say, I'm quite excited about, you know, trying those, but oh, look at those. Look at those pattern sheets. They, they don't even have color on them. You got to respect the women that were sewing out of these back in the 1950s. You have to respect that. Um, but yeah, 
quite excited about this. This is a great addition to my vintage sewing magazine collection. That's my not so little haul of uh, fabric and sewing pattern magazines. And I have to say it was really lovely to get back from holiday and to find like a nice pile of sewing lovely goodies that I could open up and get into. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and if you did do give it a big thumbs up down below if you haven't already do subscribe i put also in related content literally every single week and until i see you next time guys happy sewing bye